In this video, we're going to talk about this new copy button that you see across some of the transactions inside QuickBooks Online. So I see the copy button in bills. I see the copy button also on checks and expenses. And um, we're going to break down what uh, the purpose of that copy button is. So let's get right to it. So the purpose of the copy button is to take all the details of this transaction. So payee, transaction number, reference number, potentially category, description, amount, maybe even customer job and class information and take that data and duplicate it into a brand new transaction of a different transaction type. So for example, I'm looking at an expense here and I realize, oh, this wasn't supposed to be an expense. This was supposed to be a bill. So the way you would uh, basically copy and paste this information is by clicking on this new copy button. And then I'll ask you, would you like to duplicate the expense, which is not what we want to do? Or do you want to copy the data into another transaction? So when I click on the drop down menu, we can go and select bill. And then I'll click on copy. And essentially what you're going to see is you're going to see the exact uh, data that was on the bill be translated in, in the check be translated into the bill. So let's take a look at another bill and let's see what it would look like if we take the data that's sitting in this bill and we copy it over to an invoice. So we're going to click on copy up here in the top. We're going to copy it to down to an invoice and then we're going to click on copy. And then essentially all the data that can be copied, such as the items with the descriptions and the amounts, those will come over. Let's do a quirky example. Let's go ahead and save this transaction. And let's go back into uh, the bill. Now, for some reason, the copy function is not available in the invoice. So you can't start from an invoice and copy to another transaction. You can copy into an invoice, but you're not, you cannot copy out of an invoice, or at least not yet anyway. Eventually, if you, if you do see that copy button show up in the invoice screen or here under more actions maybe, if you see them in there, uh, that's exactly what that would mean. There is a, a create a credit memo, which essentially does translate the data in the invoice into a credit memo. So there's a mechanism for that, but that's the only transaction type that you can go. You can go from invoice to credit memo. Actually, you can go from estimates to invoices and then from invoices to credit memos. That's kind of the, the workflow that we have. So once we click on save, uh, then, uh, from the credit memo, there's no copy button, so it's not currently not on the credit memo. So it looks like the source is mostly the expense transactions. So we looked at a bill, we looked at an expense. The check works the same way, so if I click on check, and let's say I'll pull up one of the checks that we have written, okay, and then I can take this data and I can copy it over to something else. So I'm gonna click on copy to, and see you have all these different um, interesting options in here. You can copy it into a journal entry, for example, which is kind of interesting. So we go to journal entry, click on copy. And because it's just one line, it just brings in that, that one line. It just didn't bring the dollar amount for some reason. So still, still feel this sort of, um, they're kind of working on it. It's not something that has been completely finished because obviously that, that dollar amount should have come either as a credit or a debit. Maybe QuickBooks doesn't know where to put it. So it just leaves a blank, but it will still bring the account description that sort of information. Let's go the other way. Let's pull up a journal entry. Maybe we'll, we'll add a couple of lines here into the journal entry so we can have a little bit more uh, more data. And we can kind of see what happens if we use the journal entry as the source of the of the data that's being copied. So here's my uh, here's my journal entry, which is like a regular journal entry. I click on copy. Then I'm going to go to copy to, and then I can either bring this into a bill or a check. Even if I try to bring it into an invoice or an estimate, that's not really going to do anything uh, because invoice and estimates don't use accounts. They use items. So you only work with a transaction type that could bring accounts. So we can go from journal entry, let's say to bill, click on copy. And then we see all the data comes over. All the debits and the credits come as absolute values. So at this point, you would choose whether you add a negative to any of these, assuming you know that matters or it doesn't matter. Uh, you could manually do that if um, if uh, if you have to uh, make adjustments into those amounts. 
So that's really um, sort of up to you uh, to to change afterwards again because you're coming from a journal entry, which is uh, sort of kind of a, a quirky thing. Another great use case could be I entered a bunch of stuff into a bill, but let's say it wasn't supposed to be a bill yet. It was supposed to be a purchase order. So the only way to kind of transfer that information over, because there's no natural workflow to go from bill to purchase order, is to click on copy up here and then select copy to. And then at that point, I would select a uh, purchase order and then I would click copy. And then all the data from that bill gets copied into the purchase order and then naturally I would save that and then I would probably delete the bill because you know I wouldn't need that bill anymore because I went back to purchase order and then I wouldn't follow a natural purchase order to bill workflow. But what's really neat also, you can go from a purchase order to an invoice. So I can go to copy, go to copy to, or even to an estimate, right? So invoice or estimate, click on copy, and then all the detailed information that has been uh, that was in the purchase order previously is now copied into the estimate for me. So I can see a whole bunch of use cases where this is going to save people tons of time. So I am net, net super excited about this new feature. I just I would love to see it also for us to be able to initiate it from uh, invoices and estimates and all the all the transactions that is missing in. And also be nice for it for they to figure out the quirkiness, you know, to go from a transaction to a journal entry or vice versa. Thank you. See you in the next one.